Sweet. Jump on. We'll start. Yeah, we'll start with the back and Right. So I think um, Sam is going to be reeling this up, and I'm hoping Aaron doesn't apply too much pressure because I'm trying to talk and he's messing the back up. So physio work. The importance of physio work. Um, Aaron, it has been many, many months since I've been working with you, haven't I? Yeah. I think I've been coming to Aaron for the last like two to three years at this point. I think two years since my last prep. And it's something that I strongly recommend to, to all clients, people that take their physique development to a relatively experienced and like high level, and they want to be functioning at 100% optimal sort of performance potential constantly. The amount of niggles through repetitive use, through just general sort of wear and tear that occurs when we train, getting and, and having a physio to stay on top of little niggles is something that is so, so important. In any productive setting of a, of a gaining phase, a prep, you need to be staying on top of injury management and you need to be making sure to, to stay on top of, like, like I said, little niggles. So having Aaron pretty much one time every two weeks, whenever I'm a little bit more injured, we go to like pretty much weekly, don't we? Yeah. But in all seriousness, it's something that is an absolute game changer and I will be keeping him for literally the entirety of my, my bodybuilding career, if that doesn't sound too cringy. So yeah, get your physio work done, guys. Aaron, what are you currently working upon? Your uh, your pec and anterior shoulder. Anterior shoulder, anterior delt. Anterior, yeah. Shoulder's anterior a bit shoulder, slang, isn't totally it? Anterior, anterior shoulder, isn't it? Anterior shoulder sounds very professional from a, I don't know, like a sports therapist. Your big, your big shoulder. Your big shoulder. Big shoulder. So what did you do beforehand? What were you doing before? What, on your back? Yes. Um, so released your lower back, your glutes, and then we worked into like your lower erectors. Um, obviously you do quite a lot of lifting off the floor, pulling off the floor. Posing so. as well. Posing as well, yeah, yeah, so just helping with those kind of tight areas, what, what we know that we kind of want to keep nice and loose, mm -hmm. especially the front of the shoulder around here, you want to be hitting a pose, you don't want to be rounded around the shoulders, which is common from a postural daily kind of point of view as well. Yeah. Makes sense. That's good. You, you know, you, you clawed that back. You, you started off pretty poorly with the anterior shoulder. Anterior shoulder. Yeah. And then you, you, you know, you clawed it back. <laughs> I'm gonna spice it up. I'm gonna ask Aaron some rapid fire questions. Oh no, don't. Don't so, do this. No, 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 it's, it's an, um, nothing too bad. So in the line of physiotherapy work, what's mm -hmm. the most frustrating thing you deal with on a daily basis? Rapid fire, don't think too much of it. Uh, probably when people leave um, injuries or issues for a long while and then they get progressively worse and then you have to kind of patch it up quite quickly, I suppose. They come in wanting a quick fix, but then they've, they've left their back pain for like a year. Okay. When it could have been sorted quite easy at the start, I'd say that's pretty frustrating. What's the most common thing you deal with? Uh, probably just general muscular tightness from like day-to-day -day activities. So like, what do people do for work? Are they in certain positions all day? Um, are they stressed? Do they hold their tension in their upper back and their shoulders? So a lot of kind of like muscular kind of adaptations causing pain. Mm. Okay, what's the worst thing about me as a client? Uh, Come on. Straight away, go for it. Expose me. Don't hold back. I suppose it's not, it's, it's not bad, but I suppose the only like reoccurring thing that keeps happening, and it probably will in the future, is because you train so hard and you are very and you are very strong. These like niggles and tendon issues and like muscular twinges, sadly, they're going to happen from time to time. Mm. Even if you've got really good form and you warm up properly and you do your mobility, because you're training so hard, they're going to happen. Yeah. I'd say that's. Probably the worst. What about Fed? Complains a lot. A bit, he moans a bit more than me, I'd say. Do you confirm? No. I, I'd say Finn always comes to me with very weird issues, awkward injuries. Yes. Like it's not like oh I bent over and I pulled my back. It's it's always like the most bizarre injuries, and diagnosing them and treating them are usually yeah a little bit more technical. Mm. I'd say that's that that's probably number one. Okay. Do you think that's thin overthinking? Do you think that's just unlucky? Probably a mix. <laughs> oh, <laughs> exposed, thin exposed. Last question. Yeah. What one undervalued like asset of physiotherapy? What's one thing that like surprised you for getting into this? Like something you didn't expect? Good question. Yeah. As in what I do within like physio. Yeah, like anything that you did that you're like, I do you know, I didn't think I'd be doing stuff like this. Um, 
or like anything that you think you know if you were getting into it, it was any young <laughs> physiotherapist getting into it I'd say it's very uh, rewarding um, it keeps you on your toes because it you know every client that comes through the doors they're even if they've all got back injuries let's say they could be all very unique and and different symptoms and I think you have to adapt and, and it keeps you on your toes but I think that's quite exciting mm. um, and it is, yeah, it's really uh, rewarding. Nobody ever really comes to you when they're feeling good or they're in like, you know, the best position. It's usually when they need results and they need it really quick if they're in pain. Yeah. Quick fire road. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's good. That does make you think. Right, how are we doing guys? Hopefully everyone's doing well. This is going to be pretty much like a rest day, day in the life, uh, four and a half weeks out. It is currently, I'm gonna guess, Four, no, three, 58, it's four o'clock, two minutes off. So it's currently 4 p.m., uh, so it's not a full day in the life. However, uh, pretty much what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going through pretty much a usual rest day for me on a Thursday. Um, this so far today, I've literally got up cardio. I do the vast majority of my bulk main like workload in the morning. So cardio upon wake, then I go for pretty much 60 minutes worth of steps where during that time, I'm literally on a treadmill in, in my room. I have it pretty much set up where I just work through check-ins. I then do like 20 to 30 minutes walk outside just to get some sunlight exposure. And then it's literally a case of cracking on my work to my first meal, have my first meal, I make the rest of my food in that period. And then I finish up with check-ins and then I pretty much go and get my hair cut at 2 p.m. I then come to physio. Uh, we literally, I'm guessing Sam will probably whack up some of the, uh, the, the physio work. Got some work done upon my lower back, my glutes, my rectors, and then my chest and shoulders. Luckily right now, from an injury standpoint, I've really not got actually that many niggles or anything. Uh, it's more so a sense of like multiple rounds of posing per day. You pick up a fair bit of tightness. And, uh, and if anything, it's just to kind of keep me limber and flexible so yeah pretty much getting weekly physio work done which is good and then it's going to be a case now of driving back uh, sam's got the pleasure of sitting in my passenger seat of my car that's really really filthy because i've been in manchester for the past few days so i do have to apologize to sam in advance and then we are going to be filming the podcast um going through a few meals that, I've been, uh, that i'm currently have got on my rest days uh currently in the trenches it's a low day so it's pretty much like pretty low food all things considered but we've got two more carbohydrate meals today which is quite nice and uh and then yeah i'll go through potentially let's say just a few other things that i would usually do on my thursdays my thursdays are usually pretty busy just because i get all of my work done in the mornings and then i say all my work done all my immediate work and then it's a case of accessory work away from that and it's usually a pretty long one so yeah enjoy guys that'll be that hello guys right so physio done physio wrapped up um yeah taking sam to the office basically because he's filming obviously uh the office aka my mum's office is where we film the podcast uh so physio wrapped up there that's pretty much that we've now got about 40 minutes half hour so i'm gonna let sam put the uh put his music on i think he tells me the arctic monkeys that you said that you like mm -hmm. so he's gonna show me some songs that's what we're gonna go with so yeah let's get cracking <sighs> you ain't never seen nothing like this never thought it'd be so enticing oh It'll pull you in with a tight grip, shines like a diamond, right when the in light the trenches. hits. Oh, summer fruit, sugar fruit. Lifting you up to a different dimension. You see it, you feel it, it grabs your attention. Open your eyelids, you've never yeah, seen anything. Right, so we have arrived at the studio, aka Mum's office. I don't, I'm not too sure if uh, Finn's going to be doing a startup. He's got a startup, so I might do a few steps. I usually will eat about five, so we're here a little bit earlier. Um, so I'm probably going to do maybe five, ten minutes worth of steps. I'm going to do some form feedback because I've got a reel coming out about form feedback, which is very important. And then I'm going to eat. Unless Finn's ready, then I'll eat and I'll do steps. It's not going to make a massive difference. And uh, and then, yeah, we're going to crack on with the podcast. We're going to do our usual once you're in your podcast, then we're going to do a little bit of a bonus, like potentially maybe a few things on the side. Sam's going to be recording, so... Yeah, it'll be a it'll be a good video and it'll be a good podcast hopefully. I want to ask him how long he's going to be. Okay, so that's the plan there, mate. Now again, that is just a little guy, It's not always going to work. Hello, mate. Hello, mate. Hello. How long do you reckon you'll be? Because I need to eat. I was going to do some steps. Yeah, I thought if you're eating and that, I'll be done in twenty. Twenty. Yeah. Perfect. So. Okay. What time are we on now? Uh, we need to start at quarter past. 
25 is more than enough, yeah, yeah. sound. Done, hope you're all good, mate. Thanks as always for the training clips. Literally on a walk, we have Sam uh, videoing pretty much, so if anything, mate, pressure is on. Um, when it comes to training clips, obviously I know you sent through the single arm pull down and the barbell audio. Uh, I thought the single arm pull down was okay, um, execution wise. I think at the start of the set, it's pretty good, but the quality definitely drops off towards the latter end of the set, which is quite common, mate. Like, you're gonna be picking up a good amount of fatigue, your lats are gonna get tired, and then also as well, from a psychological standpoint, it's very easy to let that quality drop off. Now, what we want to look upon is our hand position relative to our elbow. Keep your hand in that neutral sort of position. We don't want to be, if anything, pronating and changing our grip. It's just going to be kind of causing a bit of a bit of grief, especially considering that the elbow is the most important thing here. So don't be playing around too much with your hand. Keep your hand consistent and focus on dragging with the elbow, especially towards the latter end. We know we place that hold on contraction initially so we can get what we can out of the shorter range of the, of the lat. But then at the same time, we almost, uh, hey, it's not going to be a bad thing if we place a slight pause in the length and just a fully standardize the rep especially towards the latter end so don't just start to throw with the upper back and if anything just get a bit sloppy try to if anything slow the reps down as the set goes on in the sense of let's say st just general standardization because you start to definitely rush the bar barbell rdl looks okay uh, I think it looks pretty decent, all things considered, mate. Loading is obviously pretty decent, especially considering what we started upon. Uh, but in all seriousness, when it comes to execution, have I seen it look a little bit more efficient? Yeah, I'd say so. So I'd say on something like this, the knee flexion is passable. It, it, it's passable. Could it be better? Yes, I, I definitely think we could have a little bit less knee flexion. So I would, if anything, say maybe strip the load back five or so kilos. We've also got to understand different gym, different setup, different bar, different plates, all this sort of stuff can definitely play a role. So that would be one thing that I would be thinking about, let's say, uh, moving forward if you are in a different sort of gym setup. And then when it comes to the lateral raise, um, this could be a little bit more efficient just based off scapular position. When we're doing a lateral raise, we almost want to, if anything, keep our kind of scapula in a, a somewhat neutral position, maybe slightly retracted, but if anything, what we want to have kind of a feel upon is what's going to be best for us. Some people prefer their scapula being pushed forward. I'm more of a, a position of almost having my chest up, but just trying to give myself the best platform to actually accentuate the side delt through that kind of entire contractile range. And therefore what I'd focus upon it's just keeping ourselves locked against the, uh, the bench, bracing hard prior to each rep, and also drive with your pinky finger. Very easy to start driving with your first finger, and that's, if anything, going to just put you in a more biomechanical kind of position to kind of target the front delt. And if anything, we're trying to really get the side delt fully short. And obviously, you also mentioned on the voice note, the Incline Smith. Uh, get a video of that next time, mate, and I'll be able to, to properly advise, and we can go from there. But otherwise, I thought the vast majority looked pretty good. Just a few slight tweaks that I'm sure next time, mate, you'll implement, and, uh, and they'll be sorted. So yeah, catch you soon, mate. Right guys, so a bit of form feedback. I just got back to Dan. It's one thing that I'm a big fan of when it comes to coaching is form feedback. It's something that is a big time cost when it comes to coaching for the coach itself. However, I have absolutely no doubt at all that it is a, an imperative part of the coaching process. Some coaches won't really care about training clips. They'll tell a client, right, this is your plan. This is what you're doing. Um, I want to see how things are. The training side of things is huge from a physique development standpoint. So assessing someone's training, their execution, their intensity, their accuracy, their, the, the mechanical side of things when it comes to exercise selection is absolutely imperative. And if we can get an extra couple of percent here, a couple of percent there, cleaner setup, it's going to result in you getting more out of every single session, every single exercise, every single set, every single rep. And as a result, their physique is going to get better. So with all clients at the get-go i say to them like send me through as many training clips as possible i want to see at least one total working set of every single exercise i've given you and for dan i've coached dan for three to four months and i'm still on it with him when i'm saying to him in his check-ins send through training clips i want to see training clips yes like i said it's time costly i probably look through 40 maybe 50 sessions per day as a minimum but that's for me from a coaching standpoint absolutely imperative for me to be able to provide the best quality of service and for my clients to get the most results so yeah, phone feedback. Meal time. It is quarter past five. To be fair, I usually eat it around this time. So I said five, so I lied on the video. I lied like on the probably two or three training training clips. Prep, prep brain. Right? Two or three clips ago. Um, 35 grams of cream of rice, 65 grams of whey as a paste. 75 grams of frozen fruit, or I say frozen fruit, it's frozen blueberries, and two blocks of dark chocolate. This is meal two, three, and four on the rest day. This is my only present meal of carbs, so pretty low carbs in the trenches. Um, however, enough carbs to still be positive, and I actually enjoy this meal. My cream of rice meals are meals that I'm not gonna say I look forward to, but it's, it's, it's okay. 
It's okay, it's cream of rice. I'm not really that bothered about food, even at this point, at three and a half weeks out, so clearly I'm not lean enough. I need to be pushing harder. So yeah, meal time did some steps before sometimes i'll alternate between meal and then steps if i'm refeeding i'll always go for a walk after my meals but i'm not refeeding because like i said i'm in the trenches so literally eating this finn's just wrapping up his startup and then we're going to be cracking on with the entrepreneur in podcast link in description to follow that give us a watch if you like what you're watching here and you want to see more entrepreneur in <clears throat> Yes, guys, welcome back to the Once You're In, You're In podcast. This is episode 93, and I know we've said we're not going to do that. I'm literally just going to use... You can't, yeah, yeah can't speak The only me. difference, the only difference, <laughs> is I'm doing my cardio, and I'm going to be sweaty, and then I'm going to go for a walk. Probably, like, the aspect of actually driving progressive overload in your training, like actually yeah. focusing on progressing the, the actual sort of not tension through your muscle. Yes, guys, so that's the video. That is pretty much a little bit of a rest day or a rest afternoon in the life of me and then likewise Finn. I'm guessing Finn's video will be out probably similar sort of time because Sam is also video over Finn. Um, so yeah, to conclude literally a case where this morning, cardio, steps, all that sort of jazz, the main majority of the work. We've done the podcast where we actually spoke about well, pretty much the reasons why we didn't want to do like a whole rest day. Uh, main importance, just couldn't afford Sam for the whole day. That's what it was. Uh, in all seriousness, our mornings are literally a setup regarding work and cardio and steps so it's it wouldn't be too entertaining sam would literally be just looking over me talking to my clients so it's not really anything special um so pretty much went through the podcast it's currently half seven literally the second i finish this about to eat my my next meal the same meal as what you would have seen before so i'm not going to be showing going oh look it's the same amount of cream of rice and i think the only difference is it's caramel biscuit cream of rice not um not the one from csn that i use because it has to be from csn reese fit 10 there we go, get a plug. But yeah, I really enjoy my rest days on Thursdays. It's a case where it's a busy day, it's a long day. At this point, I'm pretty smashed. Like I've been up and awake and talking now for like the last like 13, 14 hours. So literally it's a case of getting the final meal, um, going for the final few steps, literally a thousand steps. So just part of my routine and then making my rest of my meals for tomorrow and then literally getting myself up and ready to win the day. God, that's awful. That was a joke. Um, so yeah, we appreciate it as always. Um, if you want to listen to the podcast, because like I said, that's what we've literally spent the last like two hours recording, please feel free. Once you're in, you're in. And uh, yeah, we'll leave it there. Thanks always for the support. The next video, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, will be on the 21st. So that will be, I'm guessing maybe already videoed by the time this is out. It'll be around the same time, which will be quite cool because that'll be literally a few weeks till it'll be like two to, two to three weeks out from my first show. So yeah, exciting times ahead. Other than that, thanks as always, guys. It means ever so much for the story shares, all that sort of jazz. Shout out to Sam behind the camera and I'll catch you guys later.